We're here today with Chase Thompson from Panther Men's Basketball. Chase, thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your major. What made you choose it and what do you want to do with it? So I'm doing business and um, business has always been a big part of my life. I've always, you know, had different startups that I've been doing since I've been a little kid. I've always been a very entrepreneurial kid that do workouts with some younger kids for basketball since I've been younger. And of course my grandpa, he uh, he's a big business owner, so uh, I want to get into family business. I want to make sure that there's generational wealth, and I think business is, there's a lot of skills you can learn, but everybody needs somebody in business, no matter what, no matter what trade you're in, no matter if you're an engineer, no matter if you're the smartest guy in the world, you need somebody that can articulate your thoughts business-wise and put out your plan, and that's something I think I could do, so that's why I really got into it. I, I know I can expand a lot of stuff that my family's doing, and I have plans of my own, so. There's always a place to fit in. Yeah. When you made the decision to transfer coming from a Division I school yeah. and being at Southeastern Missouri State and having lived in Omaha, what was it about Florida Tech that made you say, I want to be here? Well, it's crazy is I never thought I'd be at a school like this. Um, I took a bunch of visits, mainly Division I. I only took two Division II visits, which was here and down the road to Florida Southern. and. This school, not only is it a beautiful weather and it's a beautiful campus, but I've heard so much about it, like academically, and I never thought I would get the opportunity to be at a school that is, you know, acclaimed for how they do things in the classroom. Because my last school, as much as it was great, we had great teachers, it's nothing compared to the strenuous academic work that this school is. And it's helping me prepare myself for if I decide to, you know, be in a workplace uh, with other people instead of owning a business so um, this school really and also relationships of course but I knew a lot of I knew the coaches pretty well they recruited me at other schools so the relationships plus knowing how great this school is with connections and how many big business owners I'd get to meet and work with this was a no-brainer it sounds like you've always had an eye towards wanting to be in business yeah. you know even as a little kid so mm -hmm. In your classes here at Florida Tech, is there something that you've learned that maybe was eye-opening to you or you talked about the potential of meeting business people here in the community as part of the, the business yeah. program here. Yeah. Have you had one that was that really stood out to you? Well, as actually, um, believe it or not, it's a group of teachers, that I, uh, a couple of teachers that I've met that stood out to me. Uh, I've met a lot of people that have owned businesses, but Talking to some of my teachers, they a lot of them have been in Fortune 500 companies or own businesses. They are just people that are tired of the, the big hustle and bustle. They want to chill out and teach and educate us. So um, talking like teachers like Mr. Muth or uh, uh, really there's so many to name, but they one of the big things that they have talked to me is just getting it done. Um, there is no excuse in business. Here's the, here the reality of it is there's everything has a, a cost, and even if it's time, if it's opportunity. Um, and they're telling me to really know how to adjust my time and uh, really my priorities to try to put what needs to be put first first. And that's what all these teachers are really stressing to us. No matter how much work it is, no matter what class it is, they're trying to tell you that there's some work that has priority that you need to do. And sometimes you just need to do it and you can't do other stuff. So um, it's that thing is learning how to um, take different opportunities and learn what opportunities I need to take. <laughs> and on that note, with prioritizing, yeah. your guys' season, really it starts in September with the first practices and then it can go into March with postseason play. Yeah. So, And there's a lot of road trips in there for you guys as well. And I know you guys are always in here early practicing. And yes. You have your film work and all that. What do you do to make sure that you don't fall behind with either your sport or your studies? How do you keep a good balance? It's tough. and. Sometimes, you know, you get behind, um, but my biggest key to myself in keeping a good balance is I've started to evaluate myself weekly. And I realized that you can do anything you want. You could do the good, the right thing or the wrong thing, but at the end of the day, you have to evaluate yourself. So I started evaluating myself before and after weeks. So what do I want this, what do I want of this week? What do I want to be productive of this week? And what do I need to get done of this week? And it's still hard, you know, it's not something that you just flip your mind on and do. Like, you, I still have assignments that I'm last minute trying to get done. And I think that's just the workload and how hard the school can be, but I think it's a good thing. But the, the biggest thing with balancing is prioritizing 
work and doing work ahead of time, reaching out to teachers. The one thing I've done more is reach out to teachers, which I haven't been good at in the past, just because I feel like I can get stuff done myself, but it's, it's more than that, it's bigger than that. Um, reaching out to teachers, asking them, hey, can I get this stuff to work on? You know, all it does is build that relationship and all you can do is ask. So that's, the, that's one of the biggest things, is really asking people around for help. And they, because they are willing to help if you're willing, uh, willing to ask for it. That actually leads well into our, our next question is, how do you feel like being a college athlete is helping you with the career that you have ahead of you in business? And do you feel like there's any lessons in life that you've learned from basketball? Yes, sir, for sure. Basketball is the biggest life lesson that um, I've been taught. It's all life lessons within itself. Um, you're gonna have situations you don't like, you're gonna have situations you like, and you're gonna have to have things you do that you have to do that you don't wanna do. Just like in school, just like in the workplace. And I realized that in basketball, no matter what happens, no matter who tells you what, just like in the real world, they're only gonna judge you by what you do. So you have to get it done. And you have, sometimes that means you have to go above and beyond, just like getting extra shots up, working out three, four times a day besides practice and school, fitting it in somehow. Or if that's go getting your extra studies in because you, just like in, uh, just like in uh, the real world, you, sometimes you don't wanna bring that work home, but you gotta bring that work home because it's gotta get done. So I would say basketball, every little thing in basketball, every workout, every film study, every game is a life lesson within itself. And you have that opportunity to, to build on those skills as you continue playing basketball. And I think that's why people love hiring athletes is because they realize that life is competition and there are ways to handle it. There's right ways and there's wrong ways. And there's people that are more prepared for that. And I think being an athlete, it's got me more than prepared to do that. And we'll wrap up with this. Uh, what advice would you give to an athlete coming to Florida Tech that wants to study business? One thing is, get a good relationship with your teachers. And I think that's the biggest thing because the opportunities are gonna come, there's gonna be internships that your teachers are gonna suggest you for if they feel like you're qualified, that they might, nobody else might hear about. But your teacher knows, so they're gonna like suggest you for it because they like you and they like the way you talk and they like what you do in their class. So go to class. Um, I, I know in my last school, this it, it was we were always traveling, so I wasn't always in class. So I'm not used to having the everyday class thing. We had a lot of online classes. Here you have to go. Go to class, get that relationship with those teachers, stay a little bit after, just talk to them for a couple minutes because those people just want to know that you care. And as long as they see you putting the time in and the effort in to know that you care about your study and you care about what they're talking about, then they're going to do everything in their power to help you. Well, we appreciate it. It's a great perspective, Chase. Thanks for joining us. No, thank you, guys.